Hey y'all, welcome to the video today about safely working inside high voltage devices like tube amplifiers. Please understand that inside these devices, even when they're not powered up, there is some serious high voltage inside them. And especially when powered up, there's anywhere from 250 to 650 plus volts, which is lethal. If you're not comfortable being around things like this, please don't ever even open one of these up. You do need to understand how to safely work inside these devices so you don't end up killing yourself. And that's what this video is about. There's other videos online as well. I suggest you watch several of them so you get a good understanding about the safety practices needed to work inside devices like this. So first we're going to go over the equipment that's needed. Obviously you're going to want some sort of a digital multimeter. I'm using this uh, Fluke 17B Plus digital multimeter. You don't need one even this nice. There's plenty of lower end ones that are available on Amazon. You just need something that can safely handle up to the voltage that you're going to be measuring. This one is safe up to a thousand volts. Um, some of the cheaper ones are only good to 600 volts. So just be aware that you don't want to exceed the voltage insulation value that your multimeter has. The second thing that, while not entirely necessary, is something I strongly recommend you getting is picking up a Variac. These things are now available fairly reasonably on Amazon and other places. Most of these are made in China, but they still seem to be fairly good quality. You want to get one that can handle, you know, the, the amperage that you're going to be using in your devices. This is a 500 volt amp Variac, which should cover any tube amplifiers that I'm going to work on. And with this big knob, you can vary the voltage of versus what goes in to what comes out. So you can slowly bring up the voltage on a device you're testing or that you're unsure about to make sure that the voltages inside the device don't skyrocket and have way more volts than the tubes can deal with at 50 volts. You don't want to just plug it into the wall and have it blow all the tubes up or have the capacitors explode. So one of these is a really good thing to pick up. Related to a video that I just did yesterday about made in China devices having the wrong voltage primaries, these Variacs, or this one I've got here that was made in China, it says right on the top of it, input 110 volts. Well, in the US, we're going to be plugging it into 120 volts. So that makes all these numbers that are on the top and this dial that's on this meter that's on the front inaccurate. So if you're going to be using this thing for voltage testing and amplifier testing, I recommend you set up something like I've made here, which is a little bucking transformer with a 12 volt, four amp transformer that will step down the 120 to 110. I'll link some websites that explain how to make these things. But if you put this, if you plug this device in the wall first and then plug your Variac into it, the numbers on the top will then be accurate for your testing purposes. The next device that's needed is something called an isolation transformer. This is a 300 watt isolation transformer that I picked up on Amazon. And basically it's a one to one wound transformer so that whatever, whatever voltage you put in here comes out here. Now, as you may notice, this cord's only got two prongs on it. And there's a reason why. In the US, one lug of the AC 
is always reference to earth ground. That's the neutral. And even if you don't have a three-prong cord like this, the neutral side is still always referenced to earth ground. And if we're going to be working around inside a live transformer, we want the voltage going into the device to be floating with no reference to ground. And here's a picture of how US wiring is made showing the reference to earth ground and why this is important. The other thing that this is very useful for is when you're working with an oscilloscope, the little clip-on lead or the outside of the B and C connector is referenced to ground through the ground lug on the oscilloscope. You want to keep the oscilloscope grounded to your house current. Having one of these in line with the device under testing or the DUT, it helps prevent you getting a conflict with the ground of the oscilloscope and the ground of the device under test through the lead and blowing up your oscilloscope. So not only does this protect you, it this helps protect any sensitive equipment that you're using to measure the device that you're testing. Another thing that's really nice to have, especially when you're testing an unknown device that you don't know whether it's got shorts inside it or whether it's been wired correctly, is a thing called a dim bulb. And again, it's just got a two-prong plug in, and I've, you know, this is made to have two prongs out. And this is just a small extension cord. And this is a 200-watt incandescent bulb. You have to use an incandescent bulb. LED, uh, compact fluorescent won't work. So you need to get one of these old-school 200-watt incandescent bulbs. And this acts as a current limiter in case there's a short or some other fault inside the amplifier that if you short the output of this dim bulb, the bulb just lights up and you're not creating a dead short. Now understand that when this is in the circuit limiting the current, that the voltages that you're measuring inside your amplifier probably aren't going to be accurate, especially if the amplifier is drawing a pretty good amount of current because you're going to have a voltage drop across this dim bulb. So this isn't used when you're actually testing the unit or testing the voltages to see if they're correct when you have the line voltage turned up to where your house is. But this does protect your circuit and you know causing problems when you first plug the device in until you're sure that there's no shorts or other overcurrent situations inside the device that you're testing. So the last piece that I have is here's the cord that I use when I'm testing um, an amplifier and here's your regular three prong IEC cord, um, IEC connector and then on this end I got a pair of pliers and I jerked the ground pin out of this plug. Only use this when you're testing. You don't want to use this as some kind of solution or if you got hum issues and you want to think, oh, lifting the ground gets rid of the hum. That's not the way to fix hum. You need to find out what's causing the hum and not resort to some measure like this that is totally unsafe to operate the amplifier as. So for the second half of this video, I'm going to do a demo of checking a power supply in an amplifier that I'm building before I get to the point of hooking the power supply and the B plus up to the tubes to make sure that the rectifier tube's working and everything in the power supply is working like I anticipate it will. Okay. Here's our setup that we're going to be testing today. The other thing that I didn't mention previously, which is very important, is 
when you're working inside a high voltage device, never use both hands. Don't like have your hand on the chassis, like it's unplugged right now. Never have your hand on the chassis and be reaching in here, even with a probe or anything. You wanna, good rule of thumb is just put your other hand behind your back. And that way you know that you can't have both hands inside the amp where the high voltage will be going from one hand to the other. That's the main thing that will kill you is if the electricity goes from this hand to this hand, it goes across your heart and will make your heart stop, which is what kills you. So again, always work with just one hand inside the amplifier. If you're anxious at all about doing this sort of work, use these little alligator clip things that you can get for these, for your multimeter leads or get some leads that have these little alligator clips. Clip them on when you know there's no voltage inside the amplifier and then you don't have to touch anything to measure the voltages. That is by far the safest way to do this and just power the equipment off. Make sure that there's no voltage on the B plus when you're moving the leads and then power it back up and that way that your hands are never inside the amplifier when it's live. I feel comfortably working inside with the negative clip grounded to whatever ground we're needing at the time. We're going to start off by checking the AC line voltage coming into the connector before we turn the amplifier on on the switch. So I'm going to have both leads coat across the line voltage and we're going to plug in the plug in our line voltage now the order that I have these devices hooked up is I've got a um, down on the floor I've got a bucking transformer that converts the 120 to 110 so it'll work with this variac that I've got from the Variac, it then goes to the isolation transformer. And then I have the dim bulb plugged into the isolation transformer with the amplifier plugged into the dim bulb for my initial testing. And so we're ready to turn things on. First, we turn the Variac down to zero. We have our digital multimeter set to volts AC. We turn the power on and then we slowly start turning the voltage up and it says 26 volts on this and says 26.9 there so we know these numbers on the top are accurate with the bucking transformer in place so we go ahead and turn this thing up and we're going to turn it around to 120, and there's 120 volts. So we know this is accurate. The dim bulb's off, so we know we don't have any short, at least in the initial part of this AC wiring. So we're going to turn this back down. And now we're ready to check the B+. So what we're going to do hand behind our back, even though we haven't turned the amp on yet, just always do that. We're going to connect this to our star ground point. And then the first point that I want to check is the voltage on pin 8 of the rectifier tube. Now one thing to note when you're checking the B plus on an amplifier that doesn't have any of the output tubes or driver tubes installed or wired up yet, the B plus is going to be a lot higher than what it's going to be 
once all the tubes are in the circuit and pulling current. So you want to be careful about how high you turn up the variac to make sure that you don't get the voltage at the rectifier tube higher than what the capacitors are rated for. And it's another reason to use a variac. If you're you if you just plug this in the wall, the B plus possibly could go higher than these capacitors are rated for, and it could blow up capacitors before you even get started with your project. So again, highly recommend getting a variac. So now we're going to set this to DC volts. The other thing that we need to know is that with two rectifiers, you have to turn the variac up enough to get the filament of the rectifier tube heated enough for it to st start conducting current. And so a good place to start is around 65 volts. And then keep an eye on your dim bulb. And this is showing the value of using a tube rectifier. See how slowly the B plus is coming up? There's two volts, there's three, there's 10, there's 40. Having the B plus come up slowly like this makes it easy on the other tubes in the amplifier that they don't get B plus until their heaters have warmed up and the tubes can start conducting current. So we're right now we're at 299 on at the rectifier tube at 65 volts. There's 300. We're expecting about 450. So I'm going to slowly turn this up. There's 385. Now understand that these, these caps, these aren't wired up yet, but this 100 UF cap is only rated for 500 volts. So we don't want to hit it with like 600 volts and blow it up before we even have a chance to get the amplifier wired up. This first cap's rated for 630 volts. So we're going to slowly turn this up. And there's 456 volts at just over 100 volts. Now, if I had plugged this thing in straight to the wall, without this variac, without the other tubes in the amplifier drawing current to bring down the B+, plus, we would have just blown up that 500 volt electrolytic cap. So these are almost mandatory when you're going to be working on an amplifier that you've built or really servicing any kind of amplifier. So we've got 460 volts on the rectifier tube. Now, with one hand behind my back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove the alligator clip so I can probe around inside the amp. So this was 460. We're going to measure the B-plus on the other side of the 10 Henry choke. And it's also 460 because there's no load on the amplifier. Once you get the other tubes drawing current, there's going to be some voltage drop across these chokes. But right now, because there's no amperage draw, the B plus is going to be the same everywhere in the amplifier. So we know that we have we know the rectifier tube's working. We know that we, we've got the B plus high enough for what we're going to be doing with this amp. Going to turn this off, turn that off. One thing I haven't done yet in this amplifier 
is installed a bleeder resistor. And I'll show you why those are so important. We've turned the power off, cords unplugged. I go over here to after this choke. Still got 400 volts on that pin, even with nothing plugged in. That's why you cannot assume that just because one of these amplifiers isn't plugged in, that it doesn't have lethal voltage inside it. 395 volts. The, the amplifier is turned off and not even plugged in. Doesn't, doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install a bleeder resistor between this hot pin coming out of the choke and ground so that when the amplifier is turned off over a minute or two the resistor will drain the voltage out of these that's stored in these capacitors so that the amplifier is safe after it's been off for a short period of time the value of this capacitor can be calculated and I'll link this in the description where you can put in your B plus the size the size of the capacitors and then the time that you want them to be drained over down to a certain safe voltage which about 10 12 volts should be fine and you can calculate the size of the bleeder resistor that you need based on the capacitors that you're using in your amplifier. One of the things that I've done is I will put one capacitor over here on this side of the power supply and then I'll probably put a couple of um, smaller resistors across each one of these big storage caps to kind of share the load of bleeding off this voltage through several resistors in case one of them does go open that there's still other backup resistors to make sure that the B plus gets drawn down. Now with the tubes in the amp and they're conducting current they'll help pull down the B plus but once they stop drawing current they stop bleeding the voltage out of these capacitors. So the things to remember are one amp on your back if you're skittish at all about this, just use the alligator clips and clip on to where you're going to test so you don't have to put your hands inside the amplifier at all. That's the safest way to test high voltage equipment like this. Pick up a Variac isolation transformer, make yourself up a little dim bulb thing, and then the last thing to remember is that just because it's not plugged into the wall doesn't mean there's not lethal voltages inside it. A lot of older tube amplifiers don't have bleeder resistors in them. And especially if it's been on in the last day or two, it easily could still have 400 plus volts inside it that could end up putting you in the grave. So be careful out there. If you like this video or like my channel, please subscribe. You can like this video and I'll see you in the next build video that I upload. Have a great day.